Our guest today is the theologian in residence at Solomon's Porch. He teaches at several seminaries. He earned his PhD at Princeton Theological Seminary, and he blogs daily at patheos.com. Tony Jones, thanks so much for joining us today thanks, on the set of Harvest. Good to have you in here today. Uh, we definitely want to get to uh, the Atonement and the new uh, ebook that came out just well, like six months ago or so. Yeah. But uh, first, I want to ask you: You're one of the uh, consider one of the leaders of what is called emergence Christianity, and I think that there's a lot of people who maybe have heard the word emergent mm -hmm. or even the word emergence, but it's kind of at times unclear exactly what that is. So. From Tony Jones himself, what exactly wow. is, I know it's hard to define, but what is emergence yeah. Christianity? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, you know, we just had a conference last month that uh, a lot of people came to. And I still think it's interesting that uh, maybe 10 years into this movement of emergence, even the name is shifting and mm -hmm. uh, how people understand its impact on the church is changing. Um, Really, in the, in the late 90s, a lot of us who maybe were seen to be heirs of what had gone before, of big suburban megachurches and things like that, just felt like the whole thing that was laid out before us, Christianity in, in America, it, it really wasn't working the way we thought it should be working. Mm -hmm. And so um, people came at some kind of they wanted to kind of reform or rethink the church, and people really came at it from two different avenues. Some people came at it from like, the church is broken, we need to fix the way we do church. Mm -hmm. Some people came at it from like, the way we understand the gospel is broken, we need to rethink the gospel. I came at it from that latter one. Yeah. But other people came at it more from like, the method of how we do church, and we all kind of converged at this place of saying, let's, let's rethink the whole thing, and so... This, the last decade has kind of been a journey of trying to, to rethink that. And there's certainly been some, you could say, a, a step more establishment type folks who have been somewhat resistant to some of this movement. Yeah. Why, why do you think that is? Well, it was all fine for a lot of people. Oh, if you were to go back to 2003, 2004, a lot of people in the established church were, they were cool with it. They were like... Uh, yeah, we need to rethink the church. Like we did the same thing when we stopped wearing robes and we got rid of the organ and we brought in guitars and the pastor wears a Hawaiian shirt now. But then when we said we need to rethink the whole enterprise of Christianity, like there are ways we think we're getting the gospel wrong. They're like, oh no, yeah. step off, bro. Like that's, that's too much. We're not talking about rethinking the gospel. We're talking about just rethinking the way we do church. Mm -hmm. So when we were saying, look, the way we do church and the gospel there, you can't separate the two. We're doing church this way because of the way we understand the gospel. So let's rethink the whole endeavor. That's when people started to say, I don't think this thing's for me. Now, I mentioned uh, a moment ago that the big blog at, uh, at Patheos, the uh, Theo bloggy, yeah. get a lot of traffic there. What, yeah. what, what do you, how do you see, especially the internet, um, going along with the future of Christianity? Well, I mean... What role does it have to play? I think, uh, and you, you, I bet you and I would agree on this, that the, the Internet is clearly not a fad. It's, it's literally reshaping the social structure of our culture. And no longer are there theological gatekeepers who can keep people from exploring for themselves. So yeah. people don't necessarily go to their bishop or their pastor or their seminary professor and say, look, tell me what orthodox theology is, and then I will, I'll embrace that wholeheartedly. People are like, you know, I'm a bit skeptical about people in positions of power. I'm going to go search it out for myself. And a lot of people who've never been to seminary, like, start theological blogs because they're working out their own thoughts and ideas and opinions online in real time, and other people are commenting and feeding back. And so the reason I blog so much, I'm, I just, I blog incessantly, yeah. a couple times a day I post, because I just want to be part of that ongoing theological conversation. Now, what's, what's kind of funny to me, I was actually at the, uh, the, the conference recently, and I'm sitting there amongst a, a group of folks who would be like any other group of folks you'd see at a, yeah. any church across America, I'm listening to Phyllis Tickle speak, and I'm thinking, what's the big deal? Hmm. I mean, this is all pretty standard stuff. Yeah. So wh wh why, why are some folks seemingly so 
upset about the I, even the idea of what's being put out there by yeah. folks like yourself or Brian McLaren or Phyllis Tickle? Well, yeah, the con it's what's been there's been an interesting shift in the whole conversation around the emerging church in that we went from being kind of darlings of evangelicalism where they were saying, hey, we're always about rethinking the methods of church. Mm -hmm. as, as the theology also was being rethought, evangelicals started to sour on it. And a lot of mainline churches, a lot of Episcopalians, Presbyterians, Methodists, United Church of Christ people, the people who are considered mainline, or even some people call them liberal Christianity, they've become more intrigued saying, um, you're, the, the, the rethinking theology isn't threatening to us. Mm -hmm. But, uh, boy, we really need to change how we do church because it's not working. We're, we're losing uh, members. Young people aren't coming. Young families aren't bringing their kids to our churches. Our churches are shrinking and dying. So, like, what can we learn? And, we, and then they, the thing is, then they come to our thing and we're like, destroy the denominations, like, kill the bureaucracy. That's, it's stifling the gospel when you have all this bureaucracy mm -hmm. around these denominations. And like, whoa, dude, <laughs> We're just looking to like maybe make a five to seven percent shift of course, you know, mm. course correction. And I'm like, look, if you want the Titanic not to hit the iceberg, you need to turn it more than five mm. degrees. You know? Now, w w you, you, we keep using the word theology. Mm -hmm. I want to know how, how do you define that word? Because I know that a lot of you could maybe say old guard yeah. when you start talking about like, well, we're rethinking theology. They're going, no, no, no. You're just talking philosophy because right, theology right. is just the basic orthodox tenets that the church, evangelical church may hold. So how yeah, do you even define yeah, yeah. what you call theology? Well, most people probably think of theology as what's called second order discourse. So you and I had dinner last night. If I, now if you and I are talking about like, hey, that dinner was pretty good last night. I had this pasta thing and you had a buffalo burger. This is second order discourse. We're talking about something that happened. Mm -hmm. And that's what people think of usually as philosophy or theology. You take a step back and you talk and you reflect on something. Mm -hmm. And I argue actually that theology, yes, it's second order discourse. You and I can talk about God or we can talk about Jesus or in the next segment we'll talk about the atonement. But theology is also first order discourse. In, in, this is what I mean. Everything a human being does has latent theology in it. If you're driving down the road and somebody cuts you off and you give them a hand gesture, like that's a theological act mm -hmm. in the first order of discourse. You're not stepping back and reflecting on it. You're just doing, if you open the door for somebody as you're walking into a building. Like, so I'm arguing that everything we do is latently theological. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I want people to think about it, talk about it, and, 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 and uh, embrace this idea that theology is everything. It's all we do. Yeah. Well, definitely, the, I'd say the atonement probably falls into the category of theology. We've got to take a break. Uh, after this, more with Tony Jones.